U.S. President Joe Biden has greenlit the delivery of cluster munition to Ukraine as a part of the new 800 million U.S. dollar military aid package that will also include 32 M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles and 32 striker armored personnel carriers, as well as new munition for various weapon systems like the Patriot or the HIMARS. The announced delivery of cluster munition is a bold move that was avidly welcomed and celebrated in Ukraine, but has raised a lot of eyebrows from different experts and international organizations. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week we want to put the delivery of cluster munition to Ukraine into perspective. Why is cluster munition such a controversial weapon? Why has Ukraine been asking for it for months? And what use will it actually be on the battlefield? First, how it works. The USA will deliver so-called dual-purpose improved conventional munitions, short DPICM, to Ukraine. DPICM is the name for a family of cluster munitions that comes in different forms and sizes, such as artillery shells of various calibers, ranging from 105 to 155 mm and 203 mm howitzers, but also 227 mm artillery rockets that can be fired from the HIMARS multiple rocket launchers currently deployed in Ukraine. Regardless of these differences, all these shells and rockets are designed to function roughly in the same way. The shell or rocket is lined with unguided submunition, little cluster bombs if you will, also referred to as bomblets, which are roughly the size of a hand grenade and have a cloth ribbon attached at the top that helps stabilize it as it falls. They contain an armor-penetrating charge and steel fragments that scatter when the bomblet explodes. These bomblets are typically released from the back end of the shell as it flies. It's called dual purpose, by the way, because it's supposed to be effective against troops, but also somewhat against more heavily armored targets like APCs or tanks. Depending on the exact type of DPIC ammunition and how it is employed, each shell can scatter a target area encompassing thousands of square meters. According to an article by The Warzone, a single M26 227mm artillery rocket can spread these fragments over a circle-shaped area 200 meters in diameter. That's an area of just over 31,000 square meters. Why is it so controversial? Well, in very simple terms, because cluster munition is meant to attack a larger area rather than a precise target, hard to calculate risk factors like non-military casualties increase drastically. In addition, these fragments, if they don't kill you, can cause nasty injuries. Another problem is that parts of these bomblets don't explode after being discharged. As a result, large areas of land become a potential minefield, posing a threat for years even after the end of whatever armed conflict. This so-called dud rate is especially high among Russian cluster munition, according to some sources even up to 40%. In past conflicts, US-fired cluster munition has also shown dud rates of over 20%. However, more modern DPICM, like the M864 artillery shells for 155mm howitzers, which contain 72 bomblets each, and according to the Washington Post are heading to Ukraine, have been attested at a dud rate of around 2.35% according to the US Ministry of Defense. Also, an option to limit potential damage to civilians or friendly fire is to mark any area that was targeted by cluster munition so it can be cleared directly after the end of the war. Nonetheless, the dangers posed by the use of cluster munition has caused over 108 countries to ratify the so-called Convention on Cluster Munition, condemning the use of most, but not all, types. However, the document was never signed by Russia, the USA or Ukraine. Why does Ukraine want cluster munition? Ukraine has been asking for this munition for months. There is a severe lack of almost all types of ammunition right now, so to fulfill its goals in the counteroffensive, but also to defend its territories, Ukraine needs a lot more of everything. Although countries like the US and Germany have already stepped up their production capacities, it probably won't be enough, at least in short term. This brings us to the specific advantages of cluster munition. Republican members of Congress, in a joint letter calling for DPICM to be included in future aid for Ukraine that was sent to President Biden in March, noted that a single round can achieve a similar or greater operational effect as five or more rounds armed with GMLRS. So, in the end, it's not so much a matter of wanting than a matter of needing. A necessary drastic measure, if you will. Also, with Russian troops having dug deep trenches and fortifications over a 900-mile front line that has been static almost for months, cluster munition, due to the fact that it spreads in such a wide area and from above, is an effective way of combating troops that otherwise would have to be countered by storming trenches with infantry. A tedious and very deadly process. So, Under Secretary of Defense for Policy Colin H. Carl couldn't be more right when he said the Pentagon is providing these new capacities to meet the urgency of the moment. One is the urgency of the moment, which is that, uh, you know, the Ukrainians are in the midst of their counteroffensive. And don't be mistaken, there are no illusions on the Ukrainian side that cluster munition is a dangerous and powerful weapon. Since filming this episode, it was announced that the first deliveries of cluster munition have already arrived in Ukraine. In addition, Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov promised that this munition would only be used outside urban areas. 
but this is a country that's fighting for its survival. And risking its own reputation is something that Kyiv will only do if there really seems to be no other way. Thanks for watching Talking Tactics. Hit like and subscribe and see you next week.